Hello, my name is Daisy Christensen and I'm an epidemiologist at the National Center on Birth Defects and Developmental Disabilities at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. For almost 15 years, we have been tracking the number and characteristics of school-aged children with Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD, through CDC's Autism and Developmental Disabilities Monitoring, or ADAM network. A growing body of research tells us that the earlier a child is identified with Autism Spectrum Disorder and connected to services, the greater the benefit of the intervention will be to that child. We wanted to understand more about children who are identified with ASD at younger ages to help inform early identification efforts. To learn more, we conducted a pilot project known as Early Adam. Through this pilot project, we reviewed school and health records to examine the characteristics of preschool age children, specifically four-year-olds, with ASD in five communities across the United States. We also compared the four-year-old children to school-aged children, specifically eight-year-olds, with ASD in those same five communities. For the first time, CDC is releasing findings from this pilot project. These new data tell us several things. First, the prevalence of ASD was about 30% lower among preschool-aged children compared with school-aged children living in the same areas. We know from our tracking of ASD among school-aged children that many children with ASD are not identified until after age four or five. So we expect that ASD prevalence in this group of preschool-aged children will increase as they get older. But continuing to track ASD among these younger children can help us understand more about the characteristics of children who are identified before kindergarten. Second, our data show us that preschool-aged children with ASD were more likely to have intellectual disability than school-aged children identified with ASD in the same communities. Intellectual disability means that a person has difficulty learning at an expected level and functioning in daily life. In this report, intellectual disability was measured by intellectual quotient tests. On this slide, note that ASD with intellectual disability was about 20% higher among preschool-aged children than school-aged children. At the same time, ASD without intellectual disability was about 40% higher among school-aged children than preschool-aged children. It may be that children who have more severe ASD-related behaviors or who have other conditions like intellectual disability are more likely to be evaluated at a younger age. Third, our data show that progress has been made in identifying children with ASD at younger ages. By reviewing school and health records, our tracking system identifies children who have symptoms documented in their records that are consistent with a diagnosis of ASD. That means we are able to identify children with ASD even if a community provider has not yet diagnosed them. To look at changes in early identification, we compared the earliest age at which children with ASD had a comprehensive developmental evaluation, but only among the preschool-aged and school-aged children who had been diagnosed with ASD by a community provider by age four, so that the two age groups would be comparable. The preschool-aged children were born in 2006, while the school-aged children were born four years earlier in 2002. This slide shows that children born in 2006 received comprehensive developmental evaluations at younger ages than children born in 2002. The difference of five months is important because the earlier a child is evaluated, the earlier that child can receive a formal diagnosis of ASD and be connected to services. Lastly, we found that ASD was just as common among black and white preschool aged children. However, black preschool-aged children were less likely than white preschool-aged children to have been evaluated for developmental concerns by the age of three years. The data from our pilot project indicate that some progress has been made in identifying children with ASD at a younger age, but more tracking and research is needed to understand why certain groups of children are not being identified as early as others. CDC plans to continue tracking preschool-aged children with ASD and follow up with them when they are school-aged to understand more about changes in the number and characteristics of children with ASD as they grow. 
We urge those working with young children in these five communities and in communities across the country to use this new information to help ensure that all children with ASD are identified and connected to services as soon as possible. Healthcare professionals, child care providers, and educators, you can help follow a child's development and encourage parents to do the same by looking for developmental milestones. That is, how a child plays, learns, speaks, acts, and moves. We encourage you to visit www.cdc.gov backslash act early for free milestone checklists and other resources to help you track a child's development and share with families that you work with. Thank you for watching this video abstract. We hope you will read the full article and continue this important conversation about the early identification of children with ASD.